Welcome to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, where everything you do, every transaction that you accomplish, means somebody's life. Everything you do in this ministry, ladies and gentlemen, affects every single person in this country. It could be rich or poor. Because no matter how much money you have, you could have lived all the way up to the top of Jackson and have a billion dollars in your bank account. Once you meet in that accident, you have filled up a cage. Before you get the tax, before you leave the island, you can't go Andrews because Andrews don't have emergency services. You can't go any of the hospital. Everything happens in this ministry that happens in this ministry touches somebody's life. A lot of us think that, oh, it's only corporate service. I mean, it's only technical services that do that. No. Every transaction that happens in this ministry touches the life of a Jamaican. And therefore, your work takes on different meaning in this ministry. This work is not a work that is surrounding professionalism alone. This work is a calling. And if at any point in time, you believe that this is not your calling. Leave. The work of the Ministry of Health and Wellness is so important to the lifeblood of this country that we saw in COVID-19 that if this ministry is not working Clicking our entire country comes to a halt. And therefore, there are certain cultural practices that undermine this philosophy of a health and wellness ministry. I am not asking you at any point in time, friends, colleagues. I'm not asking you at any point in time to work beyond five o'clock. Believe me. And I hold very dear to the philosophy that says, if you work after five o'clock, I must pay you for it. And if my managers and my directors are true and tell truth for me, and don't tell lie for me, but tell truth for me. They'll tell you that I have never objected to signing off on overtime, honorarium, sessionals, anything that has to do with payment outside of work hours. Because I believe strongly that if it has to happen outside of 8.30 to 5, Monday to Thursday, or 8.30 to 4 on a Friday, you should be compensated for it. But here it is, that between 8.30 and 5, Monday to Thursday, or 8.30 to 4 on a Friday, you give me what I deserve. So friends, we are in a dispensation where 
a lot of people are looking on to the ministry and they are looking at us in the public sector and saying, boy, the people are getting enough money. They must start getting enough money, they get compensation, enough money they get. The jury is still out. <laughs> the jury is still out. But there is this expectation of more. There is this expectation that we need to give more. I don't have that expectation of you. Don't give me more. Give me what I am to get. If you come to work, produce. What is your expected level of production? Don't come to work and waste time and cause contention. Produce to the level of your job description. That's all I ask. Because if everybody produces their level of their job description, we will be okay. The problem that we have is that some people produce way below the expectation and therefore some people have produced way above expectation. Did I mention? So, I am not being unreasonable and I am not asking you to go into the depths of your soul and give far above the expectation. What I want you to do is give me what you said you would give me when you were signing the contract to come here. But more importantly, colleagues, don't stay where you are. If after four years in this ministry, you're in the same post, you have failed. And I say it in as much as I'm saying it to you, I'm saying it to myself because they are five years now. <laughs> your job should always inspire you to your next level. And if you are not being inspired to your next level, you are failing. And all that you will do is create negative energies because you are a ball of negative energy. After five years, if you are not visioning yourself in your next life, in your next manifestation, in your next position, you become frustrated and bitter. But I give you a testimony that if you focus on ever improving and ever advancing yourself and your life, you will always be that ball of positive energy. Because as far as you are concerned, this is not your destination. This is just a stepping stone to somewhere greater. And you can sit in your organization, your units, your department, your branches, your divisions, wherever it is that you are. And you can see the people around you who have sat in their jobs for years and years and years and they're bitter and angry and they, they're just a ball of negative energy. Nothing can work in the ministry. A long time we have to be sad. I see them wait though for a long time and it can't change. Do not be influenced 
by this person. Begin from now to see you becoming your next self and begin to plan yourself towards that. If you do that, the organization will benefit. I tell you that as a fact. A positive, enriched employee will contribute far more to the advancement of any organization than any disgruntled, fatigued, negative employee. What we want in this room is energy that takes the organization forward. But if you are stuck in the now and the present, you can't carry this organization anywhere. You cannot. The best of intentions. And I tell you categorically for me, I transition long time. I love what I do. I'm at the top of my game. I'm at the highest point in my professional career. The next step is Capsic and you know, that's not gonna happen for now. But I'm thinking of what next for me. And I've already charted a course of what next for me. And because I have charted a course of what next for me, I begin to think about the future of this organization. What is the legacy I want to be here? And that inspires me to do more to leave that legacy here so that when I move on, people say, oh, I remember Don't Stand Right. You remember somebody, no? You deserve this man, but why? Friends, we are not here to stay. And I say it over and over and over. If you think you are indispensable, just did that say. If you think the organization cannot do without you, just did that say. And I say to my colleagues always, one read. One read. And you may, if they like you, if they really like you, you get a tribute in song. <laughs> Always remember, friends, colleagues, me first. Me first. And if you choose you, if you choose you, the organization will benefit. Choose your emotional health, choose your mental health, choose your physical health, choose your financial health, because, and I'm going to point out this matter, far too many of you are taking loans from institutions that cause you sorrow and distress. And then you come into the ministry and kiss your teeth up. Now I get a lot of money. <laughs> when you borrow hundred thousand dollars for gold, which part you which part you don't know? Hundred thousand dollars. Because them give you loan for party now, no? And some of you take it. And the repayment are like twenty thousand dollars left big money. And then it have to come out of your salary and after the party done and it's gone. You come into the organization with all of that resentment because you made a bad decision. Because you didn't choose you. You didn't choose you. And choosing you is not being happy in the moment. Choosing you is being prepared for your future. Choose yourself. 
If you're tired and you're sick, stay home. Don't come at the, don't come at the workplace with your sick self. There are 14 days sick days. You have them. If you're sick, take them. Recover. Don't come to work saying, boy, we couldn't stay away. Get better first. Choose yourself. If you need to go and leave because you are very tired and you know your body tells you you're tired, if when you wake up in the morning, your body says, What do I do? Go back to sleep. And you say, No, I have to go. And you know you have to leave, but you want to stay for it because you take your leave. Recover. Come back. When you choose yourself, the organization benefits. When you don't choose yourself, you don't go back to school, you don't invest in your financial stability and uh, assurance, you don't do your health and wellness checks, you don't take care of your family, you don't sort out yourself, you come into the organization and you infect the end tie your organization with your negative energy and production plummets because you need to choose yourself don't worry the ministry will survive you are not indispensable we thank you for your service but we want you to serve and you can only serve if you are well. Choose yourself. And it is not a selfish position. Don't ever think of it as a selfish position. The scripture tells us, love your neighbor. Who do you love first? If you have nothing in yourself, if you have not loved yourself, there is nothing to give to your neighbor. Nothing. And, and for those of you who are Christian, that is the foundation of Christianity. And you choose yourself to salvation. And it's only because you love yourself you want to be saved. You don't want to hell. And it's only because you love your neighbor you want them to choose that same salvation that you have loved yourself to choose. That is what it means to love your neighbor, to give them that gift of salvation. And the same thing for work. The only reason that you can give in the workplace is if you have it to give. So if your daddy will not work out, your boyfriend will give you a problem, or your, or your, or your girlfriend will give you a problem. And you choose not to sort it out, but choose to come to work with your face long. And people ask your question and you have to give them attitude. Nothing to do with the work, you know. Nothing to do with the people. Everything to do with what is happening at home. Choose yourself. Balance your life. Enjoy your life. A happy co-worker or a happy worker is a productive worker. And happiness is about balance. And I tell you categorically, balance comes from a sense of hope. Give yourself hope. Launch into your future. Look past your current challenges. Look past your current difficulties. See yourself five years from now. Know where you're going. And begin to plan to get there. The ministry will help you. To reach that goal. But let me tell you categorically, if you do not choose yourself,